imports from Colombia. This is not really what we work in, but just to give you an idea. Uh, again, Germany uh, exports a lot to, uh, to uh, or the biggest chunk to Colombia. France and Italy, Spain. Here the Netherlands <coughs> is much uh, smaller. And if you take a look at what they actually, what Colombia actually buys from Europe, it's a lot of machinery. Aircraft, vehicles, electronics, pharmaceutical products, electronics, machinery in almost all of the major uh, countries. Now, what, what do we do? As I said, we don't focus on these major product groups. We try to focus on non traditional experts and on those products in which SMEs can actually make a difference because uh, you know, bananas are, are mostly uh, dominated by big multinationals. Uh, Coal is, of course, not something that as an SME you're going to uh, be very successful in. So we try to focus on those sectors uh, that are non-traditional and that uh, offer opportunities for small and medium enterprises. And at this moment, we are uh, supporting 70 uh, companies in Colombia, which is the biggest uh, group in all Latin America. And one of the biggest groups actually all over the world for CBI. I, I don't have all the numbers, but I would imagine that Colombia is actually definitely in the top five uh, of all the countries that we work in, in terms of how many companies we actually, uh, we actually support. And, and we see in all our activities that there is a tremendous demand from Colombia companies to learn, to participate in training. It's very common to organize a training and to come there uh, and to find out that they have actually had to hire a whole theater because there was so much demand for, for a particular training. And 300 or 400 companies actually will show up for a particular training. This happens almost nowhere in the world. Uh, training, for example, on well, I, I mentioned the issues uh, before, trade for participation, website promotion, uh, CSR. Apart from that, we're, we're involved in quite an ambitious program with ProExport. Uh, it has taken about two years and is about to, uh, to end. Uh, two months where we work with their staff to upgrade their market intelligence and, and export promotion services for their clients, work to, uh, on a whole new methodology, a uniform methodology for the entire organization. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but uh, this is interesting to mention that we're going to, that we're now in the process of starting to develop new programs, uh, one in the tourism uh, sector and one which is going to cover several sectors. Uh, that will run for the next four years. So we're very excited to start this, uh, this new phase. Um, this is actually something and this is not, uh, very clear, but I found today in a report uh, accidentally, and I put it in the presentation at the last minute, it's a report that the World Economic Forum uh, publishes every two years. It's the, uh, the global uh, enabling Global Enabling Trade Report, where they uh, list for all countries in the world the, uh, well, a lot of things, but among other things, the most problematic factors uh, for trade. And they've asked uh, Colombian or the ex exporters all over the world, what are really the, the most important bottlenecks for you? And it turns out that in Colombia, the most important uh, bottleneck is identifying potential markets and buyers. Now, this is something that we work on. The second one, which was mentioned, high cost of the delays caused by domestic transportation. Uh, John Willow mentioned it, I think. Third uh, problem, inappropriate production technology and skills. So still a lot of work to do there. And the fourth, technical requirements and standards abroad. And that's another one that we try to work on. We cannot work on all these uh, uh, problems with but this uh, finding of, of buyers and uh, uh, potential markets and working on the technical requirements is what, uh, what we try to do. To give you an idea of the, uh, the companies that are participating, the 70 companies in our programs, most of them are in tourism. We've got 15 of them, uh, 11 in outerwear, so garments, uh, 11 in natural ingredients, the food and cosmetics industry, uh, ITO services, uh, IT outsourcing, fresh food and vegetables, those are the most important. We also got quite a few uh, industrial ones, like uh, car parts, automotive parts, subcontracting, pipe and process equipment. Not so many, but these are also sectors where we're very good company. <coughs> but the, uh, the, the most important sectors are the same ones that actually came up in John Williams' presentation. And what I 
did uh, the last few days, I asked the, uh, to prepare for this presentation, I asked some of the experts that are working on this program, now what are the most important challenges and, and what are uh, the strategies that you're working on with these companies? Now this is what, uh, what they answered for the tourism. There are 15 companies that we're working on, mostly tour operators, uh, but also a wellness center, for example, I think in the I'm not sure where. Uh, a group of boutique hotels in, uh, in Cartagena. They offer round trips, uh, the usual round trips, the Bogota, the Coffee Triangle, Cartagena, but also Adventure, the Lux uh, trips, uh, new areas in Bucaramanga, Medellin. Um, but what are they doing? Working to, uh, first of all, to increase demand from Europe, because there's still a lot of work that's to be done in Europe, although it is picking up, but uh, uh, through web, sorry, web portals, tourism fairs, inviting journalists to come to Colombia and to see what uh, to write then about the trip, the, uh, what they call the familiarization, the press trips, the public relations campaign. This is all uh, uh, going to be joined with the Then we work with the tour operators to, uh, to diversify their products. Uh, you know, tourists want to have uh, an all-round experience, they want to have quality products, so this is uh, what we're working on with them. Targeting mostly uh, the UK, Germany, France, Spain, and Netherlands, which are the most uh, important, uh, the most interested uh, markets uh, in this uh, for this sector. Uh, challenges. Well, this is something that came up to me when uh, that occurred to me when I wrote the question about the cultural uh, communication and, and strategic planning. Still, the experts that work with these companies, this, work, this is what they mentioned. Uh, what, uh, what should the, the tour operators or the company in general work on the type of communication or the communication um, in order to uh, uh, you know, have a good relation with European tour operators, with European buyers, you need to answer their emails or if, if you... What, what happens a lot actually, uh, I don't know what your experience is, is that people have actually read your email and they are working on it, but they don't tell you. So. You don't get a reaction for three weeks. And you wonder what is happening. Did they read them? Are they on holidays? Because out of office messages are not very common yet. Uh, and it turns out that they actually did read your email and are working on it, but not always. You know? So communication. Uh, and good things are that the, the, change, the changing image of the Columbia is changing, tourism is coming in, and the government is, uh, is really very active in promoting uh, Colombia as a tourist destination. Outerwear, very interesting. Uh, here we're working, and Daniela mentioned it as well, uh, with Colombian brands. This is also quite unique. We're working uh, in the same garment sector in Peru and Bolivia. Here what they do is they work for, for private labels, so they produce com uh, uh, garments for European brands. In Colombia, we've got very good designers with their own brands. This is a totally different strategy than, than working for uh, European brands. More difficult, but much more uh, rewarding to manage. And we think they can manage. We're working mostly for, uh, we're targeting mostly Germany, Benelux, uh, the UK, Italy. Uh, working on the collections, uh, trying to sell the brand. So if you want to sell a brand, that means to have a story, a whole concept, uh, and a concept that appeals to European taste. Same with the marketing material. Uh, <coughs> A lot of the marketing material that they might use in Colombia is actually not appropriate for European tastes. It's, it's uh, too uh, colorful, perhaps, or too, you know, European tastes are different. And this is difficult to, uh, to, uh, to teach, actually, because, you know, people are proud of their own uh, material, and proud of their own clothes. Yes, I'm uh, going to uh, finish. <laughs> these are some of the brands. I don't know if you know these, uh, but I'm sure some of you do. Mundo Natura, Pablo Siete, Pages, and Mega. Colombian. These are some of the brands that we actually work in that are, very that are already established in Colombia in regional markets, but are now uh, trying to make the, uh, the step to Europe. And very uh, interesting, uh, and this is also very unique, uh, actually worldwide are all the companies, uh, the companies that we work in. These companies actually work together, which is basically unheard of, for example, in Bolivia. Uh, these companies, even though they are competitors, perhaps they don't, they work together, they, they collaborate. Maybe it's got something to do with the area they're from, uh, and this is what I was thinking of when I was in this presentation. But this is actually one of the, uh, the, uh, the issues that, that the expert mentioned, which is very particular for the Colombian uh, garment producers. Um, natural food and cosmetics, uh, I won't go into detail, but uh, 
these are some of the products, uh, products in which Colombia has a unique advantage. Uh, those products you don't, leave, you don't find in other parts of the world, so you don't need to compete with, with Africa or, or uh, other parts that are closer to Europe because they, don't, they simply don't have the product. Uh, instant quinoa, for example, is something that uh, we, uh, we think is going to be a hit. Uh, I don't know how many of you know Stadia, but if you go to any gym, uh, health shop, uh, Biological or organic supermarkets, you'll see that this is going to be the future. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a sugar replacement. It uh, doesn't have the negative uh, um, qualities that some of the other ones have that you find in the book, uh, the light <coughs> the diet group. That's, those are some of the products that the Colombian participants in our program are producing and that uh, we are sure are going to be a successful in markets, especially uh, Western Europe, which uh, are most interested in and able to buy if you pay the price of these products. ITO, uh, this is what uh, Juliana can uh, tell us even more than I uh, about. Um, companies very successful, uh, very uh, able uh, technologically. Working on uh, offering offshore software development services, HRM systems, enterprise administrative and management software, uh, targeting Spain. Uh, in this case, Spain is an interesting market, uh, especially for the language, which, which in the case of services or IT outsourcing, outsourcing is, is more important than fruits or, uh, or garments. UK, Germany, Netherlands. Challenge here, though, is uh, is language. Um, the marketing approach, and this may be something cultural too, uh, which again occurred to me when I heard the question. Uh, they need to be more active, as what our experts uh, told me, in, in their marketing approach. Fresh fruit and vegetables. These are some of the products that we are uh, working on. Uh, pitaya. I don't know how many of you know pitaya, but it's, uh, you can see it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you've seen for how much they sell pitaya in, in Amsterdam on the lights of the but I think it's two fifty each. But so for this one, there was also like a boom before planting pitaya and then not anymore, so it's coming back. The, well, like it's ten years ago, it was especially the computer you know, the pitaya was, uh, I mean, I think it happened with the image, and they were unable to sell, to sell yeah. it. It's, it's not easy to sell, and, yeah. and the fresh food and vegetable market is a difficult market, and, and there's actually a lot of uh, supply more than demand often, and demands and market requirements are becoming stricter and stricter, and prices are not uh, getting higher. So it's, it's not an easy market, but uh, if you manage, there's also a lot of informality, not a lot of loyalty. Uh, people change uh, buyers and sellers uh, if they find another a better price. Uh, a lot of this is actually done without contracts. So this is, you wouldn't believe perhaps, in this day and age. But, uh, so it's, it's a difficult market, but uh, if you manage to establish a good relation with the buyer, come up with a program, offer a, an entire program, including uh, traceability, uh, interesting items like CSR, fair trade, there is definitely a possibility for these exotic products, which are not growing spectacularly in Europe, but are definitely growing. Okay, I think I'll have to uh, leave it at this. I'm already over time. Some of the pictures.